Well, hello everybody and welcome to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And uh, yeah, we're looking at the uh, pole for my new <coughs> PMA, or as some of you know it as a turbine, but uh, PMA stands for Permanent Magnet Alternator. So what that basically is up there is just a car alternator, but it's got permanent magnets in it, 14 of them to be exact. And uh, it produces alternating current, AC. Um, they do make them in a two wire that, it, this is a three way, they make them in a two wire that is a um, 12 volt DC. And that's called a uh, PMG or a permanent magnet generator. Okay, so anyway, one nice thing about these guys is they give you like three different ways to contact them. And uh, if you have any questions at all about your install or your wiring, anything like that, you can call them up. All right, so you see, I got my second set of guy wires on and I did plumb the pole today. And by, what I had to do was, like I said, I tied my um, uh, ATV off to the top of this unit right here and then took the pressure off of it and then I moved this loop a little bit so that it took up the slack after loosening the uh, turnbuckle as far as I could. It's a good idea to put a turnbuckle in like that because now you got adjustments. So you, I, I had extended that turnbuckle all the way out and then shortened my cable and then by the time I got it adjusted it was almost back together again. So when you're doing these you put your level on the pole to plumb your pole and then you can see if it needs to come this way then you're going to tighten this cable. If it needs to go that way you're going to tighten that cable. If it needs to go that way you're going to tighten that cable or vice versa. If you need to lean more to one side then you're going to loosen that cable so these cables are, or the secondaries here, are lighter than the other ones because all they do is take the hula dance out of the center of the pole. And uh, I've got a nice solid pole there. No wind again today, so it gave me some time to get everything done. And uh, since it's uh, got a little bit of light out here, I can show you what I did. And I put that uh, hinged base on there. And uh, one of the things I think I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to weld a, a T across right about here coming out like this and then go down on both sides and I'm going to put another hinge plate on each side because when you're pulling these up they do want to sway on you because you've got two two cables in the back but they're not tight yet and you got one hose, uh, rope in the front pulling it up and that thing wants to go like this it goes wherever it wants to go so rather than worrying about it tearing up the hinge and all of that I'm going to add a tri, make it a tripod or a three leg unit with three hinges so that it, it can't rock side to side. It can only go straight up or straight down. All right. That being said, let's get around the corner here because I know there's a part that everybody's been waiting for. And yes, we got weather coming. Uh, according to the weather report, it's supposed to start raining late tonight. And, uh, we're supposed to get heavy rain Wednesday, Thursday, and then a little taper off, and then intermittent uh, rains all the way through Sunday. So we'll see. They've never been exactly right. I mean, they uh, they tell me I'm going to get three inches and I get a half an inch. So, all right, this is what everybody's been waiting for inside here. Okay, so we did a little cleanup here, and. This is a rectifier right here. And what a rectifier does is it takes three phase coming in, three wires coming in in AC, and it converts it to DC. That's two wires going out. Okay? So it's that simple. That's all a rectifier does is it rectifies AC current into DC current. Okay? All right, I put my new Thermodyne 220 amp Super Duty high amp um, unit in here with the eight gauge wires coming in and out. And this is the input side, as you can see right there, and this is the output side. 
all that does is tell you what's going on. Okay, now you can see it's at 13.15 volts right now. And that's what my batteries are at. There's no amps um, or kilowatts here or um, the uh, watts peak or the amps peak is, has nothing on it because that's uh, there's no, no wind so the turbine hasn't been turning and that's going to read what the turbine is putting out. These over here read what the solar is putting out. Okay, so you see I got 13.2 in my battery banks right now, even though it's overcast. So my, my batteries are doing great. This is my dump load. So let me get, get going on the wiring here so you understand how easy this is to connect. What I did was I put um, fusible links in here. These are changeable 60 amp links. So I got 60 amps per leg coming in in case I get overpowered. Uh, high winds or something like that, it, uh, th these will pop a, uh, one of the fuses will burn or two of the fuses or three of the fuses and it's going to disconnect me. These are my incoming wires from the PMA out there or the turbine. There's three wires. They're all same color. So it doesn't matter which direction you put them in. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. You can pull them out, swap them around any way you want to do it. It doesn't matter. Temporarily, I use these three blocks here, um, these three lugs, to make my connections. I'm going to be changing that out and changing these out down the line. I ordered one. Um, it's a uh, AC breaker, three-phase breaker, that has three inlet wires and three outlet wire connectors. It doesn't go in a panel box. It just mounts right on a board uh, flat. And that, that will be a... Uh, a high amperage like a, a 60 amp breaker and that's going to be my protection then if i notice that there's hurricane force winds coming i just have to come out here and flip that breaker off and the turbine will freewheel it won't put out the high amperage and high voltage um, that i'd have to worry about starting a fire or blowing my battery banks up okay so that's where i'm going to go with that here we go Three wires coming in from the PMA or turbine. This is for an AC turbine, not, not a DC. A DC only has two wires. Three coming in. They go into the blocks and they tie into my fuse blocks. And my fuse blocks run over to my rectifier. Okay, one, two, and three. So the rectifier now also has diodes in it. And for those of you who don't know what a diode is, it allows electricity to flow in one direction only. So the electricity can only go this way. It can't come this way. So it won't discharge your batteries at, uh, when the wind's not blowing. It won't turn that alternator into a motor and spin it like a uh, propeller. It, it allows the, the, the voltage to, uh, or the current to go in one direction only. Okay, So that's what that, that this is all about. This is just, again, just a meter. So it's coming out of the rectifier at 12 volts here. And it's going through the meter. And then it reads whatever output I'm getting from my turbine up there, my PMA. Then it comes out here. Now, all you have to do on the two outputs here, and you don't actually need, to need this. I just like it because I like to see what, I'm, uh, what my amps and voltage and my watts are. You could actually just come right from here and go to the batteries. And that's what these do. They come right from the outside of this because this is reading everything. And they go to the batteries. Black to the negative, red to the positive. Okay. So this is this is keeping a track of my battery voltage in here right now. And when the turbine starts producing, it'll keep track of what I'm producing. All right. Now, you see another wire coming off of this uh, ground connection, and then you see another wire dangling here, and you see another wire dangling here. So what we're going to get into now is dump load. This is a dump load system. Now, you see it says solar there. You don't hook solar to that. This is not for a solar controller. This is a dump load controller only. Okay? So you got your battery connections here. Red for positive, green for negative. It says right there, positive, negative. Okay, so the, the green is tied to a, a negative wire 
that goes down to the negative pole of the batteries down there. The red is tied to a red wire that goes down to a positive pole of the batteries. Now that's charging this system. All right. So now when the system gets up to like 13.8 on the batteries, then this unit will click on. And that what that does is it closes the gap between these two wires right here by sending electricity out through these. These are what the activators, the two black wires. They activate that solenoid and they connect that wire to this wire. So now this wire, which comes off the positive pole of the battery, comes up here and it runs out through there and it runs along this wire and it runs up to my dump load. Right now I'm using this as a dump load. This is a heating element. It's cold right now, but it was hot earlier when the sun was out and I was producing more electricity than I needed. This, this unit clicked on, and I'll show you what that looks like when you, this is a, a manual on right here. So you see, I, I, got a, oh, I got a yellow light that's telling me that I'm dump loading. And if you look up here, you see my voltage dropping in my batteries because it's sending it over to this heating element. Now this heating element is already getting warm to the touch. All right, I wish I had my little thermometer so I could show you, but I guess you, you just have to believe me. It's getting warm right now. So it's taking power out of my batteries rather than overcharging my batteries. Now I just manually shut it off, okay? So now the, the, the yellow light is out, red light is on, it's back into its own natural position. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So the simple connection on this, the two little wires that where the battery is, positive to positive on the, on the batteries, negative to negative on the batteries. That's it. The unit is charged. Then you're going to take off of it. You're going to have one coming up from the positive of the, of the batteries coming up to here. And this just all this solenoid is is like a light switch on a wall you let you flip on and off to turn your lights on but this one is done automatically the black wires send out the extra electricity click these two on and then it it turns the switch on for you then the electricity flows out this wire and you see I, I marked it with red uh, shrink tube so I know it's a positive and I put a 30 amp fuse in there and that comes up to here then the black here comes down and goes to the negative pole of the battery. That's all there is to it. All I'm doing is taking the extra electricity out of the batteries, running it through this unit to, to lower the voltage on the batteries to a safe voltage so I don't blow them up by overcharging. And then when it's done that, when it's dropped it down to the proper, then it automatically kicks off and lets the charge start going back into the batteries. Okay? Any questions on that, you can leave them on the comments section down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with your friends. And a lot of you homesteaders out there are um, going to be homesteaders. If you have any, uh, any questions on this stuff at all, just uh, feel free to ask. I don't mind answering the, the uh, comments and the question sections. Um, I don't even mind if it's a, uh, what they call those guys, trolls. Because, you know, trolls don't bother me. They ask me a question. Well, that counts as a comment, right? So they just did me a favor. All right. So that's what's going on in here. Now, one other thing real quick before I go off. This is an MPPT hybrid controller, okay? And this is a solid state controller that handles solar panels and wind turbine and apparently has its own dump load in here, okay? Don't use these. Do not use these if you're going to use high output turbines like I've got. That's okay for a little 200 or 300 watt system. Um, but you'll also notice that if you try to hook up your dump load on there, um, you could have already shorted out the solid state board and then that will short your system and then you won't get any output. It'll actually put an automatic brake uh, which is a short break and the way they the, what they're talking about a break is that 
stops the uh, turbine from spinning, but it doesn't. If the winds are high enough, it's going to make it turn anyway, but it's shorted out between two of these legs. So if I clip the wire from there to there, it would do the same thing. But that burns up your PMA. It burns up your stator. You don't want to do that. Best way to disconnect is, like I said, put a, a three-phase breaker in here and flip that off. That's all you have to worry about. If you're using a DC, you have to use a DC breaker, not an AC breaker. This has to be an AC breaker. If you use a DC breaker, you only need one on a DC unit. But you'd ha instead of using 10-gauge wire like I got to use here on a, a three-phase, I would be using one-aught wire, which is really big, thick wire, like the thickness of my finger. Um, this is this stuff here is number two, okay? So it's bigger than this. I didn't want to spend that much money, you know. And stuff is like uh, six dollars a foot or something. Who who wants to do that? But sometimes DC is what the people want. With DC, you don't need a rectifier. You just come in through your controller and go straight into your batteries. That's all there is to it. Then you still have to put your dump load on. Because those PMAs and your PMGs will definitely produce more electricity than you're going to need when you've got a lot of winds coming. And you've got to have a place to send that to. Otherwise, you're going to blow up your batteries, cause a fire, cost you some money. You don't want to do that. All right. That's all. I'll stop rambling. I'll see you all again soon. I'll let you know how the weather does. G-Bear, signing off.